Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we will be looking at everything Gosa. In almost my usual beer style format I will begin with the history and then move on to recipe design and how to best go about the processes behind Gosa creation with footage from my recent brew of this style. After this I will share some recent images of the end beer along with tasting notes. So let's get started with a little history. This beer style actually originates from the year 1000 but did not actually find popularity until 1738. By the 19th century, just one brewery was producing a million bottles per year. Naturally, the malt and water available these days is different, so the style has moved along with this. These days, there are over 400 breweries producing Gosa worldwide, most of which are actually located in the US, not Germany. The key difference between the German version and the American one is the American version is much more sour. What does not change is the fact that the Gosa is essentially a wheat beer style with added salt and coriander. The Gosa beer style is very simple and rather stayed in its design. Despite being simple it really is another case of a beer style where less is more. Let's look at recipe writing. There are just two different types of malt involved here, both wheat or either Pau or Pilsner, and these vary a little but mostly you will find they are between 45-55% to for each malt respectively. There is just one hop addition for bittering, and this is done to a low level, typically at 10 IBU. European hops are the most common and are usually of the middle through Halatel variety. This style also uses salt and coriander for flavouring which really set this style apart, especially when combined with a souring effect. Yeast is going to be either a German ale yeast or something neutral. I have shown on screen some examples of dry and liquid regular yeast as well as commercial isolate fake. Your choice here is really going to lead the style for you into either the German or American version of the style. Some American versions will also use fruit, so if you decide to go that route then please consult part 3 of this series where I show the process for raspberry and also show other types of fruit that are popular choices for sour beers. Naturally, seeing as this is a sour beer style, you will need something to sour it with. Whilst you can use things like grain or yoghurt, you will enjoy a more specialised result with a sachet of bacteria that has been designed for the purpose. Here are some commercial examples shown on screen with the first data showing the package sizes these are sold in leading down to the pH range at the bottom there. As you can see all three of these have different effects and pH ranges. In my last video of this series I featured the Philly Sour Yeast which provides an easier route to sour beer compared to kettle souring. But it should be understood that a kettle sour has the advantage of the user being in control of the pH level should they want to be. It is very key to point out that the actual magic to the Gosa beer style is in balancing the pH, the salt and the coriander to your own liking. So as such this is one where you will want to dial in the pH for the best end result for you. My suggestion would be to try my recipe and then if needed adjust levels to suit your own taste, which is coming next along with brew day footage. As detailed further in the second part of this series of videos, I decided to use a kettle sour for this style. So on day one I did the mash, sparge and then a short 5 minute boil before cooling the water bacteria pitching temperatures. The 5 minute boil at the end is really to kill off any other bacteria and also drive off some oxygen. Once this was done I then used some food grade lactic acid to bring the pH down to 4.5. Please do consult your local homebrew store here in regards to chemicals that they stock for lowering pH. I then pitched my bacteria of choice. Personally I went with this particular one in the hope of a lower pH and some more extreme flavours from the souring. I fancied the idea of something more funky. This was then covered over with cling film first as shown in the previous video, then the lid and a clean towel on top. Then the brewing system was set to temperature for the bacteria. Personally I used a 35 litre Brusilli here but any quality electric all in one system should be safe to use. Two days later and you can see that there has definitely been some bacteria at work here. The smell was certainly very tropical citrus and was certainly more fragrant than the previous sour pitch that I used for the bacteria pitch in the second part of this series. Much to my wife's relief, this was only noticeable once the towel and lid were removed. When I was ready to continue the brew, I removed the cling film and took a pH reading. 3.18, great, this was close enough to what I wanted and then I started the boil. 
On the way to the boil there was certainly much foaming from the protein in this grain bill. Here is a look at that now. As you can see I've opted for 55% wheat and 45% parallel. This is the classic balance for this style and I personally find that it gives a great backing for the flavours for the style. At this level the wheat is contributing its flavours nicely, but it is away from the danger zone of sticking, so I have found no need to use rice holes with this one. Naturally if you are running with a fine grain crush then this could lead you down the path of needing to use rice holes, so be aware of this. Once the brew was at boiling temperature I spent some time to stir in the top protein to allow it to drop down and form part of the beer, and of course to avoid a boil over. Once this was done the first and only hop addition was added and stirred in. Shown on the right of the screen now are details relating to the boil and beyond. As you can see I've shared the hop addition as part of a 30 minute boil. If you wish you can boil this for longer and use a little less hops. As you will see at the 10 minute point of the boil there is call for salt and coriander. I would highly recommend using the best quality and most fresh examples you can obtain here. These two components are very important to this style. I used a good quality sea salt for example. Once this was all done and the wort was cooled I then transferred into a fermenter and pitched my yeast, making sure that this was rehydrated properly in wort. I then pressurised the fermenter ahead of fermentation using this trigger system that is attached to a soda stream bottle. The spunding valve was then added and tweaked for 12 psi. This led to a fermentation time of just over one day. Here is the finished beer after a week or so in my kegerator. It is fairly hazy still but this is essentially a style of wheat beer so given time I do not expect this one to drop clear of course. The aroma of this beer is very fresh with a definite blast of coriander and citrus. The flavour is very refreshing with the sourness hitting you at the same time as the combination of coriander and salt. The combination of these three in harmony results in something very thirst quenching, but also quite surprising in how the end flavour turns out. The coriander is certainly more discernible than the salt, especially when in the mouth. The salt is there in the background in the aftertaste, but not to the level where it becomes very distinct at all. I had people blind taste this that I suspected would not even know what this beer style was, let alone that a beer existed that had a salt addition. Certainly none of them mentioned salt at all when I asked them to detail the flavour experience. They just spoke of citrus and coriander and how refreshing and easy drinking the beer is. For many of them this was their first ever sour beer experience and the majority found it to be very accessible. I certainly find that with these types of tastings it is better to say nothing other than try this beer I would be interested in hearing your experience rather than would you like to try a sour beer. I certainly feel that giving a beer style a title like sour beer, okay it's very descriptive but it can put some people off. Keeping an open mind to these things is certainly the way forward for sour beer virgins. Shown on screen now are links to join this channel's Facebook group if you have not already. We have a fun and busy group with people of all experience levels. The only rules are around conduct. We insist that members are friendly and mature. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate then please like this video on YouTube and if you've not done so already then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!